Blast Belong is this sort of intrinsic dance between two people, it's this duet. I found very early on that it was the kind of medium you could work through ideas quickly with, and that was something that really attracted me to the material. Unlike painting and other mediums, you have this opportunity to be able to show something that's moving and live and viscous. And I feel really fortunate to be able to pursue that here today in Norfolk and at the Chrysler. As you know, I've been in conversation for a while with the Hellers. And you've been sort of doing this dance, trying to figure out maybe they're going to give me a show, maybe they weren't going to give me a show. It's official, we have a date. I got a solo show at Heller. Awesome! awesome. Yay. We're working on pieces for a show that we're doing in New York City at Heller Gallery, and all of the work in this exhibition is thinking a lot about interpersonal relationships. Um, so we have two months from right now to opening day. We have five pieces that we have to create. So I've created these wonderful packets for you guys. We're gonna have to um, really try to be organized about this. I'm hoping that everybody else can relate to this and these are sort of universal topics that anybody could talk about and sort of like how a comedian makes fun of themselves or their family first. I kind of feel like this is a subject matter I can own and if it's about me, then it's okay. I'm not exposing anybody else necessarily except for my boyfriend. The one that I probably want to focus on the most in this conversation is message received. What I'd really like to do is create every single text message exchange between me and Jesse. But I don't think there's a big enough wall to do that. How many messages do you have? Thousands. <laughs> All of the work that we're making right now is engraved, which is really laborious, um, super time consuming work, and I couldn't complete it without the team. So, um, dividing and conquering is gonna be the name of the game. It's gonna kinda be like an assembly line where we just go for it. Often people don't understand that there's hot glass and cold glass. For the projects that we're working on right now, we're doing cold glass. So because I'm using this sort of antiquated technique of engraved cameo glass, I often will pair that with sort of modern day social media or text messaging or things like that. For work like this, especially with the time frame that we're dealing with, there's no way I could complete it without this incredible workshop of people that are helping make it happen. I feel really fortunate here at the glass studio. Something in the hot shop you can make in 30 minutes and it's over, but something in here you've invested you know, hundreds of hours in to get it to where it's at. And I think that's a huge part of my work is this sort of courting this futility of how much effort you put into relationships and how much do you get back from them. Like in any relationship, there's good things and bad things. Um, we couldn't possibly do all of the text message and Facebook exchanges because we would have needed, I don't even know, like way more space than we have. And this whole body of work has been really specific to me and sort of exposing myself in a lot of ways. And this, for this exhibition, it was the first time that I kind of asked somebody to expose themselves as well. And there's a lot of sort of vulnerability that goes with that and a lot of intimacy that goes with that. The particularly low moments are literally mounted on the wall low. And the particularly beautiful moments when things are really working out are mounted really high. So what it does is actually graph the relationship, the highs and lows of the relationship. He says something like, everything's easier if we know everything's gonna be okay no matter what. And I'm like, yeah, we'll be okay. I think that a lot of it is gonna be shocking and I think a lot of it's gonna be funny and I think some of it's gonna be heartbreaking and that's what a life is, right? So why would you leave out any of it? Pending is a piece which is about all of my pending friend requests. We've been having a lot of challenges along the way and I want to sort of create these mobiles. We got to this place where we were trying to make one big mobile but it, it's feeling too symmetrical. I feel like what we should do is lose the frou-frou that's happening here yeah. and try to emulate something like this that's, that's smaller. We want them sort of asymmetrical and moving um, 
but for whatever reason, they all are ending up really symmetrical and they sort of look like chandeliers. At least one, maybe I two? Think, I think it's probably gonna be at least two. Okay. It just feels like a decent amount of resistance. Okay. You got the tape? Tape, tape coming up. In a perfect world, I'd love three on this side so that it's not exactly mimicking the, same the as other the one. the other one? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good call. Doesn't feel like a, a I will use this attention. anonymous Facebook character. I don't know where they live because on Facebook they don't say. So I'm imagining that they just sort of live up in the cloud, you know, the, the ether of the internet or something. And so we're trying to figure out how to visualize that. Anonymous. It is. He's like the anonymous. There's no name? Well, it, there's a name, but it's one of those just people like who a, never put their picture down. Yeah, I would have to say that. I would defaulted to the... Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, this is looking uh, good. Did we do it? Yeah, I think so. We fucking did it. Okay. Oh, excuse my French. Ah. Sorry. Yeah. And another half. Hour. Done. Yeah. Growing up, mom and dad were serious hippies. So they built this house um, embedded into a hillside that looked like literally straight up after Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Magic was alive and fantasy was very much alive. We were heavily nurtured to sort of fall into whatever creative realm was right for us, and which really worked with all the kids. You know, my sister's a musician, my brother's a poet. I saw glass immediately and never looked back. I've often been told, you know, you're too career driven and this is something that's gonna potentially, you know, make it more difficult for you in personal life. And that's what I do often with my work is think about this sort of focus, this aperture, what is it, relationships, and then how is there multiple access points? How can I try to ex really explore this topic from a number of different vantage points? So one being Facebook, one being really literally exploring my own family tree and bloodlines, and then another one being exploring my, my personal relationship. We're headed to see this guy, Peter, who hasn't slept yet. <laughs> He's been making the crank for the sibling piece. I think he thought it was only gonna take like four hours and it's taken him 30 hours so far. He wasn't returning my phone calls for a little while, but hopefully it's done. You can put it in the car, hit the road before it gets too icy out. My grandfather was the head of the lab that created the transistor, but then he also went on to create the atomic bomb. <laughs> and then, you know, my brother's special needs and my sister's a rock star, so you just never really know what you're gonna get in the crapshoot of genetics. And that's kind of what this piece is about, and also just an ode to me and my brother. And now Peter has created a crank system so that um, it creates an optical illusion when it rotates, like the two faces are merging optically into one face. Nice. This is an image of myself and my brother, and the piece is called Sibling. I thought about calling this piece Two Sides of a Coin or something like that but I, I felt like that was too in your face. And I want it to be like a beautiful homage to my brother too, so that looks so good. Nice work, Peter. Ultimately, I think what drives me to make the most is this concept of like, I feel like at the heart of the human condition is wanting to connect to people. And my work is really basic. It's about wanting to be able to connect to people and wanting to be able to be heard and wanting to be able to um, hear other people too. I believe that there is 500 cameos and 300 text messages, <laughs> about a thousand pieces of metal someplace in this car. It's all been organized. I hope it's all here, but yeah, this is the moment we're gonna finally shove off and um, try to make it up to New York. In some ways, like, a huge chapter is done and there can be a little bit of relief, but then there's a whole other sort of push once we get up there of how everything's gonna fit in the space properly and we know there could be some complications there. We're as ready as we're ever going to be in terms of pushing off here. stressful driving up there 
with a lone suburban um, in a ice storm. So we'll see how that goes. Welcome you to the Heller Gallery, where for 40 plus years we have been representing artists who use glass as the primary material in their artistic practice. In spite of a blizzard that is raging outside right now, we're expecting a lot of Charlotte's friends and friends of the gallery to be here this evening and to celebrate her and her new work. I'm not dictating what I want people to take away. So I think some people might finish reading this and be like, these people are doomed. Or some people might read this and be like, wow, that's really, that's really loving and that's really interesting. Being so surprised at how in depth and how intense and how serious a text message conversation could be love and lust and desires and adopting children together, like all of this somehow played out in a text message exchange for me, which is something that I would have thought would be relegated to, I don't know, like a serious dinner conversation that would happen in person. For me, all of this is sort of a reaction to this new technology and this new way that we communicate with one another, but I can't even begin to anticipate how others will interpret this work and I'm excited to see. All of the planning has really paid off and it, and it came out exactly how I would hope. With pending, when people stand back and recognize that it's a map of America, and they start to be like, huh, this sort of looks like something, and then maybe that moment when it clicks will be sort of this epiphany moment. So it's definitely kind of like this culminating moment in a lot of different ways, and it's exciting to see it all happen at this one gallery that I respect so much. You know, right around my birthday, right around Jesse's birthday, I feel really lucky that he was game to sort of go there. You have to be pretty strong to, to expose some of the stuff that's out there on that wall. It was wonderful to have my whole family there and for them to sort of see me um, operating in my world. And she always said, Mom, I'm gonna be a conceptual artist. I'm not yeah. gonna make things over and over like you and Dad did. <laughs> And I got the invitation in my email from Heller Gallery, and it said, presenting American artist Charlotte Potter. Mm. And I just about lost it. The fact that she's here is an amazing achievement. I think the essence of it is coming up with conceptual art that actually makes a conversation and tantalizes you to think beyond what you would have thought walking in the door. It was incredible. I mean, it was. People came out of the woodwork, and even though it was horrible weather and the trains weren't running and all of the above, it worked and everybody showed up and it was a huge, incredible, super receptive, um, really enthusiastic crowd. And I guess I just don't want to let up. Like, that story's not finished. That is an ever-evolving story. There might need to be some tack-ons and some add-ons at some point, because it's still pretty juicy. Oh.